hey guys and girls welcome back to a, another beautiful video on this beautiful channel on this beautiful day how you guys and girls doing hope you're doing great as always hope you're having a, a good old time and you're looking forward to making this game really awesome um because i am but sadly we got to do all this this engine stuff first uh so what are we going to talk about today is is basically delta time and just implementing that making sure it works and then we're going to test some stuff out maybe create the state class and all that um, but uh, before we get started, before we get started, please check out the description box. Bunch of useful links, Twitter, Discord, all that stuff. Check that out. Uh, also, drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. But let's just get going. So, first thing I'm going to do, around here where I have my variables, I'm going to create something, uh, a, a float basically. It's called DT, okay? It's delta time. And it's short for... We keep it in short form because we're going to use it a lot and it's it's a pain to write delta time every time. Uh, and then we're going to have a SF clock object called the DT clock. So delta time is going to keep track of how long it took for us, for our game, to render, for up for, to do one update call and one render call. Okay, so that's a frame. So one update and one render together, how long did that take? And it was always going to keep track of that and reset itself. So it's going to be a few milliseconds each, uh, each call or each frame. And this is going to help us make sure that when we move objects around, we're going to multiply that with DT. Okay, so we'll always move in a frame rate independent way. So it won't be, if, you're, if your computer has lower frames than mine, you're not going to move less. You're going to move the same amount. It might be a little more jittery, but it will still move the same. It will kind of balance it out depending on your frame rates okay so that's why we have a delta time now to implement delta time what we're going to do is we're going to create a function called update dt okay very simple and i'm just going to go ahead and define that control dot enter we'll get that right here and i'll press this little button here to we'll go promote to document so we'll be here and uh yeah, we have an empty function. So basically how we're going to calculate it, this is we're going to say this dt equals this dt clock um, dot get elapsed time as seconds. Okay, you want to do as seconds because you want this number to be kind of small. So you'll do as seconds, then you'll get it pretty much in 0, 0.00 form, something like that. And then once you do that, you have this function complete. Remember, we want to update delta time for the whole time it took for this loop, while loop to do one round. Okay, so if we do this at the top, this update delta time, then it's going to reset the clock here, update render, then it's going to come back, reset the clock, save that delta time, and then we'll have that delta time. Okay, and then we can use that delta time in the next loop to see how long it took for this frame to... to uh, to happen okay so uh so that's great so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna get in the habit of creating comments updates the dt variable with the time it takes to render to update and render one frame okay pretty much Pretty much, pretty much. Um, okay, pretty much, pretty much. So then, once we update, update that shit. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try to print that system. Now I'm in release. You shouldn't be in release right now. I was just testing something out. Make sure you're in debug and x86. You might get some crashes if you're on x64 because we didn't link that version of SFML. Uh, CLS. And then we're going to do a C out um, Okay, I'm just going to print it out. We're going to see how big it is. Should be fine. Okay, so. Uh, that's, that's great. Not get elapsed time. Restart a second. Sorry about that. Just make sure I restart it. Otherwise, it will kind of keep going up and up and up. So it's about 0 0.02, 0 0.03, something like that. So that's that's cool. That's fine. And that's also because I'm recording and stuff. So um, 
so if I hold this, you'll see that it flips out. It takes a long time. Um, yeah, pretty much, pretty much, pretty much. Where is this update DT? Okay, so what happens if I do this? This is a little test. Uh, maybe 10,000 and I'll do a STD C out a little dot and we'll see if that actually does something to the to the delta time well it, it should because it that took several several seconds okay you know what we're not gonna do that we're just gonna remove this completely and we'll say we'll do an operation in here um, we won't do anything let's see int sum sum plus equals i okay and then we'll just say like a bazillion i don't know what that is a million i think so so now we're at 0 0.03 so it's kind of it's gone up a little bit maybe you can see that it's gone up a little bit if i add a bunch more zeros i think it will go crazy yeah 0 0.04 so you can see that it's kind of it's kind of lagging and uh, stuff 0 0.2 yeah 0 0.2 so we're you'll see the delta time will go up depending on what the hell you're doing in the game this is a very important thing to keep track of um that's cool so we'll just remove that now we have delta time working what i want to do depending on how much time we have yeah we're good uh what i want to do is i actually want to create the state class we'll work on it in the next video but we just want to create the class so go ahead into your source files add uh, and add a add a let's see am i gonna make a state pure virtual or no well we'll just create a new class and we'll call it state and virtual destructor because we're gonna be using this a lot to with inheritance okay so this is going to be our states and we're going to create states from this we'll create a main menu state a game state a editor state a any type of state you can imagine we'll create from here so we just created the class i'm just going to create a private section here um and there you go so you have your state class pretty much nothing special but we're going to keep resources in here in the state uh, like textures and stuff so depending on which state you are you don't have to load in a lot of textures for say uh, the main menu state because the main menu all you need is a few buttons maybe a nice animation maybe the name of the game some particles and stuff um, but not all the textures the game requires so we're not going to load those in here maybe if you press on start game it will start loading in all the textures for that state so this is a good way to kind of manage resources in memory um, depending on which state you're in so that's good we'll keep that here uh, we'll have our state.h now I'm gonna remove this as well if and def state h define state h this is for all of you Linux and code blocks users and the pragmons is nice it does work for you guys as well but if for some reason it doesn't use this Mm, and there you go pretty much pretty much now what is this state gonna have well like I said resources and stuff as well so to keep resources to make sure everything like that works we're gonna need a uh, an array okay an array that works so what you can do is you can use a std vector okay uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and include that here I'm gonna create my own okay and you can follow me on that as kind of advanced but if you already know C++ uh, pretty well with pointers and everything you'll understand it okay I'll try to go through it as much as I can I'll make my own but for now we'll use vector okay just for now just to give you an example so I'm gonna have a std vector of sf texture pointers okay um, texture pointers pretty sure we'll have pointers but we'll see okay textures like that and then we need to fix the include so we included vector I'm going to include 
from game.h. Let me see what I need. Uh, I'm, I'm going to need... Pretty much I'm going to take all of this. And I'm just going to include state.h here. And I'm just going to put everything else in state.h. Okay? All of this. Um, and that should be fine. Because I'm pretty sure every state's going to need mostly those things. And then we'll have a textures like this. Probably have a player here, sprites. Uh, probably have a particle engine thingy, whatever, whatever you need. Okay, we're gonna have a bunch of stuff. So the states are gonna keep track of everything. But for now, we're just gonna have to start off with this, uh, like that. And this is virtual. Yeah, that's virtual. A state is also gonna have a void update. Okay. And a void render. All right. Now I need to think if the state itself is going to calculate the delta time or if I'm going to get the delta time from game. Um, no, it's not going to have a render, right? I think, well, let me think. Let me think. Because then the game is going to just render the, the active state and update the active state and then update the delta time. But then we can just update the delta time in each iteration. Yeah, we'll see how that, we'll see how we do with that. Um, but we'll just begin with this. We'll have an update, it will have a render, it will have its own stuff. And this should be a pure virtual. So I'm just gonna set that to zero, set that to zero to make sure these, pure, these are pure virtual. And I'm gonna remove the definitions for these. Well, they don't have any definitions. And they also need to be virtual. This makes sure that, for those of you who might need a refresher, a virtual void equal to zero function like this is called a pure virtual function. And that makes sure that this class, the state, you can't create objects that are state, but they make sure that if you um, inherit from this class, if we make a main menu state, the main menu state has to, must, it must define an update and a render function, okay? Because these two are pure virtual, so they need to be defined in that uh, child class. If they're not, that won't be a true child class. It won't work, it will crash. It won't even let you start. So this, this makes sure that when we inherit from this class, we need to implement these functions in the child class, overwrite them, okay? So that, that's kind of a safeguard, so we don't forget these. Uh, so just remember that, pretty good, pretty good, pretty nice. Um, and then we'll keep working on this as we go. I think we're going to start off by making a player class as well. Maybe make a little player move around, make a state, main menu state. Then we'll make a game state. And we'll make sure we can traverse those two easily and, and stuff like that. Okay, so it'll be, that'll be fun. But thank you so much for watching. Hope you learned something. I know I jumped back and forth a lot. I tried to be a little slower. I hope I, hope I was. Uh, babbled on a little more, a little extra, just so I'd be a little slower. Uh, but there you go. So thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Check out the description box. Keep learning. Uh, check out the tutorials for SFML on my channel, also on their homepage and C++ tutorials. Just make sure you're really, really on track with C++ and everything. Uh, but yeah, thank you again. Take care and I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. All right. Bye bye.